Mr. Speaker. Thank you for allowing me to speak on this bill. <clears throat> With the extent, speed, increasing sophistication, and trend of high-profile cyber attacks, this bill is timely. We are seeing an increasing trend of ransomware, <coughs> ransomware like WannaCry that everyone has cited, as well as SamSam have targeted high, profile, <coughs> high profiles like MNCs, critical infrastructure providers, and even hospitals and education institutions. This shows us the extent of disruption that ransomware can inflict. Malware affects files, computers, and mobile devices by encrypting and locking data, rendering them inaccessible, and in most cases leading to a loss of data and impacting operations. Once inside the network, control of the management of the systems in the network, it gives control of the management inside, um, the, um, inside the network. As more businesses digitalize and technology progressively influences the way we live, work and play, such attacks will have wide-reaching impact. In the physical world, customers place their trust in businesses to provide quality services and to handle their information appropriately. The measures outlined in this bill are no different. They're requiring owners of critical information infrastructure to ensure cybersecurity is essential, uh, of critical information infrastructures are proactively put in place and that the right procedures protect customer data and ensure quality and continuity of service. This bill spells out the code of practice and standards of performance, duty of owners of critical information infrastructures to report cybersecurity incidences, to perform cybersecurity audits and risk assessment of critical information infrastructure, and also to participate in cybersecurity exercises and to put in place measures to prevent, manage, and respond to threats and incidences, investigation and prevention of serious cybersecurity incidences. Sounds extremely onerous. <laughs> to meet these requirements for cybersecurity, I think one constraint that we all must recognize is that of the availability of skills and knowledgeable cybersecurity specialists. And I think there's been a lot of discussion on costs. And the reason for that high cost that everyone's envisaging is because of this lack of skills or the need to build this base of deep skills. So with the growing demand for cybersecurity skills, building this talent base, I think we all have to recognize will take time. So clause 5.1 of the bill outlines the duties and functions of the commissioner to promote, develop, maintain and improve competencies and professional standards of persons working in the field of cybersecurity. So can Minister share the plans to build this talent base and what is being done to ensure that we have sufficient cybersecurity skills and capabilities in Singapore to meet the current and more importantly, future demands? The bill also recognizes that for cybersecurity to be effective, it must start at the top with owners or leaders of the critical information infrastructures. So building cybersecurity awareness and culture across an organization requires a strong tone from the top. So it's interesting to see that part three of the bill clearly outlining the accountability of owners of critical information infrastructures. And failures of owners to comply with the regulation carries with it heavy penalties, including imprisonment for a term not exceeding two years. Clause seven, eight, put the same emphasis on critical information owners by by the government, stating that when the critical information infrastructure is owned and operated by the government, the permanent secretary allocated to the ministry who has the responsibility for the critical information infrastructure is treated as the owner. This sends a strong message that leaders own and are accountable for cybersecurity in the organization. This will keep cybersecurity top of mind in the organization. Compliance is necessary, but not sufficient. Building resilience is at the core and the spirit of this bill. To achieve cybersecurity, we must not only ensure compliance, but more importantly, an understanding of a mindset change of all stakeholders of Singapore's critical information infrastructure. While measures are put in place for compliance, people are one of our weakest link. Employees must understand the impact of their actions on cybersecurity. With the increasing sophistication and social engineering, Targeted phishing emails are not as easily detected. 
it is becoming more difficult to tell a malicious email from a legitimate email. Hence, cybersecurity awareness and keeping cybersecurity top of mind is key. So apart from cybersecurity professionals, training and building resilience of all employees and users of critical information infrastructure is as essential. This is not a trivial task, and organizations will need support to achieve this. So can Minister share what will be done to support organizations in this aspect? We must also recognize that it's not a matter of if, but when there will be a breach. In fact, statistics and information collected tells us that many organizations that have been breached take about 12 months on average to actually discover that they are breached. Organizations must have processes and tools to detect cyber threats or incidences. Most importantly, organizations must have in place processes to take action, to recover, and to minimize the potential impact of the breach. So as Singapore strives to be a smart nation, cyber security is critical. Ensuring cyber security and resilience of our critical information infrastructure will require a strong partnership among stakeholders in the ecosystem. So to effectively fight cyber threats, organizations and the government must work together, as no one has all the knowledge or resources to do it alone. So for a start, there must be a two-way information sharing and feedback. By sharing plans on how data collected or submitted to the commissioner will be used and how it will be used will enable owners of critical information infrastructure to better understand how the data they submit are used. And this will help build trust among stakeholders to share and more importantly, work together to combat cyber threats. The cybersecurity journey has started and is one that we have to continually work, to, to work on to protect our essential services. Mr. Speaker, sir, I support the bill. Thank you.